Well, AMD really just threw down the gauntlet against NVIDIA today with its MI400 AI chips, which are set to ship next year. These chips are uh, stacked into massive server rack called Helios. Think hundreds of processors that work as one giant brain. This matters because AI companies need exactly this kind of hyperscale setup to train their large language models. AMD's betting it can also undercut NVIDIA in terms of price as well as power consumption, with executives promising, quote, aggressive of pricing, although they didn't share the actual numbers in terms of cost. The company also claims its new hardware uh, beats NVIDIA on offerings for AI inference, which is the part where uh, trained models actually answer questions and generate responses. CEO Lisa Su just spoke with our John Ford just within the last hour or so about the major partners on board. Listen in. If you look today, you know, seven out of the top 10, you know, model builders and AI companies are using um, AMD products. You know, that includes Meta, Oracle, OpenAI, Sam Altman was here with us today. Meta and Oracle were here. Um, you know, XAI, Tesla, to name a few. Despite that, though, AMD's share price stock really hasn't gone anywhere in the last year. What, down almost 2% versus NVIDIA, up 5% year to date, suggesting investors really aren't convinced so far that this, David, can take on the Goliath of AI chips. But with cloud providers uh, and AI companies burning through billions of dollars on computing power, AMD's timing couldn't be better. The question is whether customers will be willing to risk switching from NVIDIA's proven ecosystem for potential savings from NVIDIA, uh, AMD, I should say. Melissa? Christina, uh, Lisa Sue was also talking about an open system uh, yielding the best, te you know, innovation. And I guess that's sort of, um, she's talking her book. She, she wants people to be out of the NVIDIA ecosystem and be willing to use AMD chips and technology. Right. So it's the seventh generation Rockem. That's her software platform that they were also announced the seventh generation. That's an open ecosystem, which differs from CUDA, uh, NVIDIA's closed system. But if you recall, perhaps maybe just, uh, was it a month ago, not even, NVIDIA is finally opening up their closed ecosystem, specifically with a product called NVLink. So without getting too technical, NVIDIA is realizing that the future is open. Open. You need to be able to take different parts from different companies, even though both companies really just want to own the entire stack and have everybody just stuck on their products. But it seems like that's not going to be the future. People, chips need to either work together or else you lose market share. All right. Christina, thank you. Christina thank you. parts Nevelis. What do you make of AMD? Only because you asked me would I rather NVIDIA or AMD, because I know that's what you're thinking, right? I was not I thinking that. No. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. Either. No, 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 either. No, no one? You may Dollar? answer the question Dollar? anyway. A AMD, I would rather have AMD. I think AMD is the wolf on the hill versus NVIDIA is the wolf at the top of the hill. I think NVIDIA has more to lose. AMD has more but to gain. I've said that so many times. You could have, right. So AMD was in a declining trend line since uh, March of 24, convincingly broke out of that declining trend line in May this year. So I would rather, if I'm putting new work, money to work, I'd rather buy AMD. NVIDIA way ahead, but AMD is poised to be the biggest opportunity for them. Well, I don't want to take the other side of the birthday boy, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> so I, I'd rather, and the way I'm positioned is far more dollars in, in NVIDIA than, uh, I was going to say Nova, we were just talking about it, <laughs> than AMD. I do like Lisa Sue a lot, but the valuation differential is not very big, right? So that makes me far more interested in NVIDIA mm -hmm. over... Yeah, well, I mentioned this. So the gross margins in NVIDIA, this has been something we've all been tracking. The company guided them down. And, you know, since they did a couple quarters ago, um, from the high 70s, kind of the low 70s, they said it's going to pick up back at the end of the year. The stock really stalled out. I mean, it's really gone sideways. And, you know, if you look at AMD and you talk about how they're going to compete with NVIDIA, it's going to be on price. AMD has already this built-in kind of ramp as far as margins are concerned over year over year. They went to 53 percent last year, 51 and a half percent expected this year, up to like 55 if they're going to be competing on price, that's not happening. So the stock, you just mentioned valuation, it's probably too expensive, and that's already embedded in the street consensus.